Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, October 23rd, and it is a beautiful fall day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Really looking forward to getting outdoors for a bit today and enjoying this uh, beautiful, crisp fall weather. So, good day. Ah, today is, uh, we're, we're about a week out to Halloween, and normally Halloween is a big deal for, for me. I, I, I love it, and we'll talk more about that. But this year I got some complications and I ain't going to be able to do any Halloween specials or any of that good stuff. So, But we can have at least one Halloween video, which we're going to have right now. And as I do every year, I've got my special Halloween pipe within his coffin. This pipe only comes out the week before Halloween. It's a very very special tradition so there the pipe is named Bela he has a he has a cloak cape and there he is so Bela is a I suppose you would call that a poker I'm terrible with shapes um, made by Jesse Jones a wonderful pipe maker and it's got this fantastic skull band on it and you know, wonderfully comfortable stem. This is a beautiful pipe and uh, I, I love it. I can't tell you how many times during the year I think to myself, why did you make that a Halloween only pipe? Because I would love to have this as a year round pipe, but it's become a, a special tradition for me. So, And Bela sleeps in his coffin with Igor. <laughs> Igor is a tamper that was made by my dear friend Danny Shore, who, uh, as many of you know, was a wonderful part of the YouTube pipe community, but, but passed away. Uh, he made this tamper for me, and uh, he made it from a bone that he had found when he was out on the beach hunting for bottles. Uh, he used to find old bottles and also bottles for recycling, I guess. Uh, but anyway, that's my, that, that is Igor. And I always... Bela is always paired with Haunted Bookshop because Haunted Bookshop is spooky. So let me load up the pipe and talk a bit about what's going on. So normally I love doing those Halloween special videos and I do have a playlist of them. I'll try to link to that. I don't know if I can put it in the video or put it down below, but I do have a playlist of Halloween videos from the past. I put a lot of work into those. You know, I've got specials on... Uh, the three big universal stars, so uh, Bela Lugosi, um, Boris Karloff, and Lon Chaney Jr. And then I did a special on the horror series of Frankenstein movies. And I, last year I just did a reading uh, of a uh, Charles Dickens uh, short story. But, you know, I, I, I enjoy making them. I was going to do something this year, and, you know, it got later and later. I was going to do a reading, because that's pretty easy to do. And then my dad got sick, and I'm actually going to be going up to Vermont on Tuesday, and I'm going to be there all week. So I don't have time to even do, like, a Halloween live stream, which is another thing I try to do. You know, have a little Halloween party, if you will. But, uh, unfortunately, just the timing isn't good this year. So... This is going to be it. This is the Halloween special, I'm afraid. And, you know, to be honest, I'm not in a very spooky mood. <laughs> I just haven't had time to even think uh, Halloween. But I love the season, and I'll, I'll tell you why. The first is, it's one of the few holidays that they haven't ruined. They're trying. They're definitely trying, and I think it's been ruined for children. And what I mean by ruined is, it's not like, you know, this past, it was Friday actually, Friday, um, the Hallmark Channel started running Christmas movies 24-7. It's not Halloween yet. Christmas has become a massive mess of consumerism that starts in October now. They ruined Christmas. 
not as a um, not as a holiday in the the um, spiritual sense, mind you. That's something that is personal and uh, can't be ruined. But as a event, as a, as a social event, as a family event. I don't even want to talk about Thanksgiving and Black Friday and all that nonsense. I haven't ruined Halloween. Now what they have done is they've ruined trick-or-treating, which is a bit of a pity. Um, between overly cautious parents and fear of uh, virus, you can't, can't go trick-or-treating anymore. And we, we didn't have trick-or-treaters in the area anyway. I don't want this to be a video complaining. The point is, I love Halloween because it hasn't yet been affected by these things. There's not a lot of consumerism, consumerism, cons you know the word I'm trying to say. And, but it's still, people still decorate, you still uh, see, you know, costume parties happen and you, you go to the store and it's an appropriately timed uh, appearance of cards and decorations and such and you can go well people decorate their their office cubicles and you know people will dress up on on halloween to go to work sometimes and yeah i've never done that but <laughs> it's fun to see uh, yeah i'm going to the doctor's office and i'm, I'm almost certain the, the one receptionist will have her uh her little receptionist area all decorated because that's something she does for every holiday i and so i like that I like that it's still what it was when I was a kid in those regards. The other thing is it's the gateway holiday. It's the fall. It's like it, this tells us, yep, fall's here. Uh, we hit Halloween. Now we start to look forward to Thanksgiving. Then we start to look forward to Christmas. And then there's New Year. And this is a wonderful time of the year. From Halloween on, it's just, I, I, I love it. You know, it's, it's I'm sure it's summer's great. And I love spring and I love fishing and all that but there's something special about this end of the year period and Halloween marks the beginning of that so I've always enjoyed it and there's something about Halloween and pipes and I don't know what that is maybe it's the fall connection uh, but there's something and, and other people have said this too there's something about pipe smoking and Halloween that seem to go together So since I can't do a Halloween video, other than what I'm doing right now, I like to challenge you to either, if you don't make videos, leave a comment. If you do make videos, make a video. This isn't a gall. This isn't. A, this is just something fun. Um, what's your favorite Halloween memory or maybe what's your most prominent Halloween memory so it may not be something you you're happy about but what, what's your best your, your your most outstanding Halloween memory and I'll tell you mine which is a little a little silly I was quite young so I was well we moved when I was in the fifth grade so this had to be prior to that and I'm guessing I was probably in the third grade whatever age that makes you and I wanted to be a vampire for Halloween and you know my mom on a white shirt and black pants and um you know white button down shirt and she she some somehow really made me a cape it was a black cape and uh i had the fake fangs that you put in <clears throat> and i had all this hair i, I actually did have hair once and uh, in a move of brilliance and probably ultimate regret <clears throat> She decided to slick my hair back with Vaseline. And, uh, you know, I, I just had it all combed back like that. So I had a little peak here and it was 
of course, I had brown hair, but it looked black with the Vaseline in it. And uh, there I was, Count Dracula. And I went trick-or-treating. And we would go from, you know, house to house. And, I, it was, and then there was always the stop at the convent because we had, you know, at the time, Catholic schools all had convents associated with them, which is where the, the nuns that taught uh, lived. And they would do a big deal for Halloween. They would, they would have, uh, they would make various treats, uh, popcorn balls, Rice Krispie treats, those kinds of things. And you'd come in and they'd chat for a while. You know, the parents would be there. Uh, my grandfather often took me and uh, they would, you know, just, it was like a social event for them. And people would just kind of file through and the kids would get something in there. And, and it was nice because you got to see the, the sisters in a more um, social setting. You know, and I, it wasn't like they were having a party, but it was the closest thing that nuns have to parties, I suppose. <laughs> so we go and, you know, file in and, and go through this, this, you know, all the greetings and everything. And I can clearly remember one of the, the sisters that taught me at the time. I don't remember who she was or what class she was, but I, I can kind of see her face. She's bending over and probably putting something in my bag as she's talking to me. And she said, what, what is in your hair? And I very proudly told her that it was Vaseline. And she immediately snapped into that nun teaching you mode. And she said, you have a class tomorrow at 8 a.m. You better get home and have your mother get that out of your hair so that you're able to get to school tomorrow. <laughs> And at that point, I panicked because I hadn't thought about how you're going to get the Vaseline out of my hair. Uh, so, yeah, there was a lot of hair washing that night. And that's that's my most memorable Halloween moment. The nun yelling at me for having a costume. Let me know if you got one. Um, again, just if, if you want to make a video, that'd be fun. Uh, otherwise, just leave a comment. So I got some pictures I wanted to show you. I, I came down here yesterday and continuing down the rabbit hole, I need to put a vice, a, a face vice on my bench in order to do dovetail large boards. So I decided to flatten my bench first. And then I said, well, I don't really have a good four plane, a plane that you would use to, to flatten something. I, you know, I get by, I've got um, Stanley six, I think. Or maybe it's a, I don't know. It might it might be a Miller Fall, but it's it's a reasonable size plane. But I haven't I have it actually set up for finer work, and to use it as a four plane, I'm going to have to put a camber on the iron and stuff, which I can do. I just don't want to do it. And but I did have a wonderful plane, and let me let me show you some pictures here. Uh, this plane is an old wooden plane, obviously. It is. A plane made by uh, H. Chapin, that was uh, Hermann Chapin, who uh, ran a plane factory in uh, an area of New Haven, Connecticut, known as Pine Meadows. And this plane was made in Pine Meadows somewhere between 1825 and 1860. I think, I think 1825, maybe, maybe 1826. 1860 at the latest. This plane is at least 150 years old. Um, not in bad condition, given the, the time. I mean, the, the worst problems, there's some checking in the wood, but it's that for a four plane, that's not too important. Uh, some rust, as you can see, you know, the bladed rusted. But the back, you can see at the bottom there is the back of the plane blade, and it's actually pretty well maintained. So this plane was used, it was actually used quite a bit, but there's a lot of blade left. I think this plane was probably used by its original owner and then sat down and not touched for a very long time until it came to me. You got rust in the areas that you would expect to rust, not in the areas that were protected. And uh, other than that, it was dusty and the plain body had checked because the wood had dried out. So I cleaned it up and this is post cleaning. So I didn't really thoroughly clean it. I took off that surface rust with uh, a product called EvapoRust. Uh, just lightly brushed it with a brass brush, the, the metal parts. The rest of the plane I cleaned with Murphy's oil soap and put a coating of uh, Danish oil on it and let that dry 
rubbed it in well and let it dry. Um, nothing on the sole. So, yeah, it, it was actually very lightly restored because I wanted to keep the, the character and the spirit of this thing, given its age. Uh, put it all back together, and the darn thing is taking thick shavings off of cherry with no problem at all, and uh, just working beautifully. So after probably at least 150 years, it lives again, and I'm quite happy that I was able to do that and bring it back to life, and now I can use that to flatten the bench, to install the vise, to dovetail the sides, to make the chest of drawers, to put the sharpening stuff in. You know where I'm at. So, <laughs> I'm going to write one of those books like The Old Woman That Swallowed the Fly. If you don't know what that is, look it up. It's classic. Oh, folks, so what else is going on here? I mean, other than Halloween. I didn't really talk about my dad. Uh, if you watch the live stream, he's doing fantastic. Uh, your prayers have been remarkably effective. And uh, your prayers, our prayers, a lot of people are praying for him. A lot of people have been thinking good things for him and, and sending me kind words and wishes. And uh, boy, I can't thank you enough. It's gotten me through a really rough time. And uh, I'll, I'll be honest. I thought I thought I'd be at a I'd be making you know funeral plans at this point. I really thought it was that bad. Um, he's sitting up, watching TV, eating, talking. Uh, his kidney function has improved to the point where the doctors do not think he's going to need dialysis going forward. Just a temporary thing because his kidneys had essentially shut down. It, it's just it's miraculous. It really is. And the cynics among you will say, well, you know, it's... <laughs> but I don't care. I think it, I think this was a miracle. I think God has worked in his life and in my life. And because you've witnessed it, it he's worked in your lives as well. So I'm going to leave on Tuesday morning. I got to be here on Monday because I'm getting some sort of viscoelastics gel or something injected into my knee. You'd think I would know what it was. It's hyaluronic acid, but I think they do it because it forms this cushiony elastomer gel thing. I gotta get three injections once per week uh, on Monday, so I'm getting the first one Monday, tomorrow. And then I'm gonna give it a day and then drive up to Vermont on Tuesday. Uh, spend the week with my dad. I've gotta be back Monday to get the next injection. So I'll probably drive back on Saturday. So I'll spend a few days up there. I'm not yet sure if I'm going to be visiting with my brother and, and my, my niece and nephew. I, I don't know if they're ready for that yet. Uh, but my dad is doing so well. I think I think it's going to be okay. So hopefully I'll get to spend some time with them, spend some time with my dad, uh, get some things sorted because this is this has created a mess, as you might imagine. And then... Uh, Head on back, and I should be back for this time next Sunday. So there won't be any um, live stream, but there will be a, a Sunday video next week. And yeah, that's about it. So again, I won't apologize because people have told me to not apologize, uh, and I shouldn't because the family comes first, obviously. But I do feel bad that I'm not going to have the Halloween stuff this year. Um, I look forward to it, probably more than you do. So, if not my apologies, I guess my regrets uh, that I can't do that. Um, I again thank you all for your prayers. They've, they've been wonderful. They've really helped. And keep, keep them coming, please. And many of you have called out problems with your own parents and you know just to tell, to let me know we're going through something similar I appreciate that and I got you guys in prayer uh, all of you I, I, I keep you in prayer because uh, the wonderful community and I want us all to be as happy and healthy as, as God wills so with that folks I am going to draw this to a close I thank you so much for joining me this Sunday not so spooky Halloween but I hope you enjoyed it. Get out your special Halloween pipe. Put in a special Halloween tobacco, even if it's pumpkin flavored. And enjoy the holiday. You'll take care, folks. Have a great week. And until we meet again, 
I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Thank you.